Now, there's not much in terms of fancy going on here, and our price jumps to about $550. So I'm interested to hear what we get in terms of sound performance at this price tier. And the more I look at it, these really just seem like the great value brand version of the autos we're gonna look at next. It's kind of like if Walmart and Ford made a headset. It's like bad tasting bread with a check engine light on. Now, one weird one that I've noticed is for some reason, the autos just feel like they're crushing my head when I'm wearing them. And I had a couple other people test them and they said the exact same thing. Why are these things trying to smash my brains out? Just be aware that I think these headsets are designed for people with heads in the shape of a doorstop. And one thing the sixes do have is they actually have like an earplug mode. So they, it bumps up the sound by six decibels. So you can use these indoors, wear your earplugs, put it in earplug mode, and now listen to loud muffled sound. Hey wizards, now with so many different headsets on the market, I think it's really hard to navigate like exactly what you're getting when you're paying more and kind of what you're sacrificing when you're paying less. So today we'll be comparing budget versus high-end headsets so you can determine which one is the right fit for you. Much like our budget versus high-end comms video, we'll go from like the cheapest to the most expensive, but I think every cool guy nowadays does a tier list, so we'll add that in also and give our ranking at the end. I joke because I do like a good ranking, like to see where things fall, but it's interesting because nothing turns grown men into like emo teens like a good ranking list. Now the list is useful to see where my head's at, but I really implore you to make your own conclusions, make your own ranks. Don't take YouTuber thoughts as gospel, and instead, maybe just throw my whole list away. We'll take each headset, look over the specs, then we'll listen to the performance of each headset with loud noise along with normal voice performance in a quiet area. And then I'll wrap it up with my ranking, but hopefully with all the data of like the specs and the voice performance, you can generate your own ranking system that's probably a lot more valuable than mine. Or like a lot of people seem to do, they add in some sort of paint chip inspired comment down below this video. What I'll also do is I'll take all the audio bits that we have from this and put them all back to back at the end so you can kind of hear them a little more side by side. And also I'm not gonna do any sort of audio cleanup. So everything you hear through the actual headset is gonna be exactly how it comes through my Rode Lavalier. I do wanna say a big thanks to Comgear Supply for supplying most of the headsets here today. And you can use discount code TLDCO to save a good bit over at comgearsupply.com also. Now though, I did buy some of these so that adds some bias. And that's probably why my chart and anybody who makes any sort of tier chart is slanted in some way. Like the, where are they? The Peltor Sports I bought, they're pretty great. Uh, the Swordens were sent to me for promotional content. I use these like pretty much every range trip because they're great. The Opscore amps I did buy, but I have a lot of people over at Opscore that I really like and I communicate with. So there's definitely a lot of bias there. The Poltac and the Auto, these were sent to me from Comgear Supply. I don't know anything about these companies besides the fact that Jay Murph really likes autos. Best of luck to both of you. And the Peltor Comtech 6s I bought myself and I really wish that I didn't. From my booth visits to Peltor and 3M over at SHOT Show, I'm fairly convinced that they're annoyed that other human beings actually exist. And it's not a place that I would wanna invest my money. So now you know my biases and kind of where all the headsets came from, but let's get started with the most basic, and that's gonna be with the Peltor Sport X300s. Here's our standard Peltor Sport 300s that I've shown you before. I really do like these. The Sport 300s come with standard ear cups that I upgraded because the original ones are just basic junk. On the front of either side of the headsets, we have two large mics. There is also the ability to remove the ear cups and connect these into a headset using any standard Comtac connectors. The power button is located on the rear and has large up and down volume buttons to make it easy and intuitive to use even with gloves on. The headband is unforgiving hard plastic with no real padding, and I upgraded to use a padded headband to make them a ton more comfortable. Hidden on the bottom is a rechargeable battery port if you use rechargeable batteries, I don't, along with a 3.5 millimeter jack. The battery compartment is easily accessible and houses two AA batteries. Now these used to be a ton cheaper at like 70 bucks and now they're like 120. 
So plus the headband and the gel cups, I think you're at like 200 bucks, which means you're a lot closer to sword and territory at that point. At $80, these made a lot more sense than they do at 120. Noise reduction on the X300 is a strong suit with a 24 NRR, meaning you could use these outside. You could probably use them indoors without doubling up, but I would really, really recommend even with a 24 that you're gonna double up and your hearing protection still indoors. But now that I'm thinking about it, it probably dropped down to 22 when I added the gel cups. So yeah, either way, just double up. Let's listen to the ambient and the voice performance of this headset though. This is a test of headset audio quality in a quiet space so you can hear the differences in voice playback. This is a test of headset audio quality in a quiet space so you can hear the differences in voice playback. One of the things you, you're not gonna notice now that we've done this as the first headset is the X300s actually don't increase volume levels above ambient. And that's it's kind of a marketing thing. They wanna upsell you on higher end headsets that can you know pump up the ambient sounds above ambient listening levels. So that's one kind of annoying thing about the X300s. And it's even more annoying because the knowledge required for that level of electronics to like pump it up over ambient is like a high school level. For the X300s, I place these in the D tier. The price used to be better, but you get a good performance for the value. I dropped the rating from a C to a D because of no integrated comms, but you can connect in a headset and mic on the 3.5 millimeter jack. Like we mentioned, sound performance is limited to a lower value by marketing to upsell you, uh, but this is still a great starter headset, but it's one I think you'll grow out of. Now, I don't want you to think a D rating is bad though. I give these to my wife every time we go out to the range and she just, she just absolutely loves these. All right, next, we're gonna work our way up in terms of price because that's what I said I'd do. Uh, next will be the Sword and Supreme Pro Xs. The Sword and Pro X LEDs I have came in a multi-cam pattern and come standard with gel cups along with a pretty useless LED on the front. At the front of each side, we see the shielded microphone for omnidirectional sound reproduction and some wind cut. The ear cups are not removable and these do not swap into a helmet configuration without tearing these things completely apart. The power button is located on the left side in the center with volume up and volume down on either side. The headset comes with an included headband that I thankfully lost because it sucked and upgraded to a padded one. The rear of the headset hides the exposed 3.5 millimeter jack on the left earpiece, while the right has a battery compartment that has a mildly annoying battery system that holds two AAA batteries. And I think people really complain about how bad the battery compartment is. It, it's not that bad, but I have had to use like a punch or a butter knife to like seat the bottom battery. I have been stuck out at the range more than, more than one time without a punch and, and no way to seat that bottom battery and just had to go with dead headsets. Now the LED version is like 299, but I recommend you get the non LED version for like 270 some odd and save yourself a good bit of money for a weird feature you don't want. And yes, we're almost at $300 and we still got like four more. Looking at the NRR, the Swordens have the lowest on the list with 19. Um, outdoors, they're absolutely phenomenal. Like I said, I use these a ton, but indoors, you pretty much have to double up because it's so low. But I, I double up indoors every time anyway, so it's a non-issue for me. Again though, outdoors is phenomenal, but let's do the listening and ambient test next. This is a test of headset audio quality in a quiet space so you can hear the differences in voice playback. This is a test of headset audio quality in a quiet space so you can hear the difference in voice playback. And what I find interesting in that audio clip and when I hear them is that ambient sounds like the soft quiet sounds can sometimes be way louder than actual loud sounds. So that can be a little bit odd with this headset. For the Swordens, I put these at B tier. They offer a stupidly good performance to cost, and it's the headset I grab for every range trip. The lack of integrated comms brings the ranking down, but again, you can use the 3.5 millimeter jack. The Pro Xs do have some really great 3D sound reproduction that makes the sword and headset the king at this tier. Now, I did have a set of high threat headsets like you see fancy Grand Thumb wear, but Jason has those right now. The, the high threats are basically sword ends that have the down leads and the mics all built in. But going through T headsets, 
to get those, that's who makes the high threat, is an absolute pain unless you're some sort of like huge corporation. But if you love the Swordens and you wanna have comms and downloads and all that in this thing, you can get the high threats. They're like 800 bucks. They're just an absolute pain to actually buy them. All right though, let's look at what's next. I probably should actually know what order everything is in terms of price before we started. All right, I looked at the list. Next we have the Poltec headset. The Poltec here just, well, it looks a bit basic straight from the get-go. The ear cups have a thin pad that is pretty much guaranteed to slide off my ears. There are also two recessed microphones on either side that look a bit small and concern me about how much sound is getting let in. The ear cups are removable if you take out this hex screw and there is an included removable mic. Confusingly, the mic looks like it can swap sides, but no, you can't actually hook it into the other side. There is no power button as you just hold the plus for on and the minus for off. And there really isn't any easy way to know which is which when you're actually wearing the headset. The headband is an unpadded leather that would need an upgrade immediately, but there is an included down lead to connect into PTTs. There's also an easily accessible battery compartment on both the left and right sides that houses a single AA battery. Now there's not much in terms of fancy going on here and our price jumps to about $550. So I'm interested to hear what we get in terms of sound performance at this price tier. And the more I look at it, these really just seem like the great value brand version of the autos we're gonna look at next. For noise reduction value, I found these have an SNR of 28. Now SNR is kind of an annoying marketing thing that they use to make the number seem higher than it actually is. So for NRR, like we've been showing everything else, it's gonna be more in like the 23 or 24, just like all the other headsets. But let's answer that question. What do you get for sound performance and mics and down leads at $550. This is a test of headset audio quality in a quiet space so you can hear the differences in voice playback. This is a test of headset audio quality in a quiet space so you can hear the differences in voice playback. Tell you what, that did not sound great. And wearing them, it sounds startlingly bad when you talk. It's like, think about if you're taking an audiogram test and your whole voice echoes inside your head. It's, it's exactly like that. You're obviously sacrificing a lot at this price tier. I put the Poltec headset in the D tier. This is really expensive for the performance you get. Every bit seems like it's functional ish, I guess. And while comms and download is integrated, I'd recommend you shop around a bit more. It's kind of like if Walmart and Ford made a headset. It's like bad tasting bread with a check engine light on. Now you're going to see something super familiar with the next headset as we move into the auto noise barriers that look, yeah, they look exactly like the Poltax. Well, actually the autos look a lot fancier with nice logos and patterning on the headset. We also see some really nice gel cups included along with two large microphone areas that look like these headsets can take in a lot more sound. The ear cups are removable and use the standard ComTech connection system. Not stupid, hex nuts. The auto also uses an articulating mic that is nice and stout and there is a true ambi design that actually allows you to swap this mic to the other side. The power buttons are like the pull tack with the plus and minus to control power on and off with the volume control. The raised plus and minus like on the actual button helps you determine what is what when worn too. The headband has a nice comfortable padded foam and there is the included down lead to connect into PTTs. We also see the upgraded version of the Poltax battery compartment with a single AAA battery on either side. Now, one weird one that I've noticed is for some reason the autos just feel like they're crushing my head when I'm wearing them. And I had a couple other people test them and they said the exact same thing. Why are these things trying to smash my brains out? Just be aware that I think these headsets are designed for people with heads in the shape of a doorstop. Now, the price on these have started to increase. Now we're at about 700. So we're, we're seeing a good bit of price creep, but we're seeing a lot more sound performance and better build quality at this price tier. And that leads us into sound protection. For this, the autos have a 23 NRR. So again, super good for outside. As with all the others, I would still double up inside when you're using these indoor shooting. 
Now though, let's see why JMurf just continually raves about the auto and listen to the actual sound performance. This is a test of headset audio quality in a quiet space so you can hear the differences in voice playback. This is a test of headset audio quality in a quiet space so you can hear the differences in voice playback. Now I think that definitely sounded better, but there, there certainly seemed to be some sort of hum going on during the ambient test that that would absolutely drive me nuts. The wind cut also didn't seem very good. For the autos, I placed these in the B tier. The price of what you get is pretty impressive while not breaking the bank. You get all your comms and down leads and a functional headset. And you kind of get like this straight out of the 80s vibe with this whole Transformers look to them. I don't know, I think that's kind of my favorite part. Okay, next we're gonna have the, oh, the Peltor Comtax 6s. Here we have the iconic Comtax with the 3M Peltor logo on the side. Included in the box are both standard and gel cups. The standard are wet ass and should be thrown away immediately. On the front are two large microphones for omnidirectional sound. The ear cups are removable on the side super easy, but the headband is somewhere between god awful and the stupidest thing I've ever seen. The Comtex 6s do have a removable mic that you can move and adjust and theoretically lift out of the way. I say that because 3M says the mic is swappable to both sides. Now, I don't know if no one bothered to test this. I mean, it works, barely. Here's how it works on the right side for comparison of how poorly it functions when you swap it. Now, the power buttons match the other styles, and I'm betting they copied the Comtax with the same plus and minus. The tiny little baby hand buttons don't make it easy to depress, and the confusing combination of buttons and presses make the menus a chore and a half. The headband itself is padded plastic that feels like the quality of a worn seat in a Lincoln town car. The single down lead does include a single down lead, so that's nice. We also see a familiar design of the battery compartment with a AAA battery on either side. I don't know how well I controlled it because I realized I got a little bit sassy there, but I've had these for like two years and I've taken these out to the range maybe twice and and I've regretted it both times. Now for price, we're definitely getting up there as these with the single down lead are about $1,100. So yeah, price is definitely creeping up. Now on these, I have the gel cups installed, which brings down the NRR rating to these to a 20, which isn't so bad, but it's not really a good excuse because the other padded ones that come with it are probably the worst product on the market. So those don't even count and we're not even gonna talk about them. And one thing the sixes do have is they actually have like an earplug mode. So they, it bumps up the sound by six decibels. So you can use these indoors, wear your earplugs, put it in earplug mode, and now listen to loud muffled sound. And I need to get off my rant here, but I also wanna say that I really, really hate the sound profiles. So when you change the, the volume setting, it doesn't just change the volume, it also changes how it listens. And it can be super, super frustrating in what you're trying to do as you're kind of locked in and you just, you just can't get things to happen how you want it to because you're swapping between sound profiles. The Comtex 6s do have the NIB feature though where you can talk through proximity comms to anybody within like 30 or 40 feet. I, I don't know. I don't know if that's something you necessarily want. I, I guess someone could also eavesdrop in on those conversations. Uh, I don't know. I haven't tested it. I need to get another set so we can test out how that works and how well the functionality is but let's hear how the sound performance is when compared to like our X300s and see if it's worth like 10 times the cost. This is a test of headset audio quality in a quiet space so you can hear the differences in voice playback. This is a test of headset audio quality in a quiet space, so you can hear the differences in voice playback. I did find the sound quality was a good bit better than the Sport 300s, but I'm not sure it was 10 times better. I placed the Peltor Comtex 6s in B tier. The feature-rich headset just seemed like they wanted to upsell you in all the wrong places. The sound profiles didn't amaze me, and the NIB feature is something I could probably live without. The garage sale headband confuses me, and this overall product seems like a great way to look fancy 
while only being solidly so-so. And I wouldn't be surprised at all if the feature to swap the mic was designed by the same moron that engineered the headband. If you want contacts, like they're very popular, get the threes, skip the sixes, you could probably save a ton of money. Definitely skip the sevens, those are like $3,000, and I think they're just an exercise in how to fleece the government for as much cash as possible. All right, <laughs> time to be nicer, because we like Opscore. Next is the Opscore amps, I'm just kidding, by the way. Next is the Opscore amps in the NFMI and connectorized configuration. Here we have our Opscore amps with our nice Reese wrap camel covers. These use a nice low profile gel cup to give a mix between a standard and gel cup fit. On the front, we see two recessed microphones that are still large to take in a lot of sound, but I am concerned as it won't be as good at blocking wind. The ear cups can be removed easily, and there is a smart headband design to swap the whole system in like less than a minute. The included mic seems stout, but I have heard from others that these can break pretty easily. You can also swap the mic to either side without it being brain dead like on the Comtex by just lifting the cover and moving the mic and then tightening it all back down. There are also AAA battery compartments on either headset, and the power buttons are again a little odd with the small baby hand buttons, and these can be pretty tricky to use. The visible indicator of a plus and minus doesn't make a lot of sense when you're wearing it, as you can't see this. Thankfully, the NFMI and other buttons are super intuitive, so you won't be fiddling with it much. The headband has a nice padded felt that adds overall functionality to the quick swap system to easily wear these things on the range or integrate them into your headset. The connectorized versions also means you can remove your down leads when not in use instead of having dangly cords all over the place. And this is one of my favorite bits if you're actually using like different comms in different areas or different branches or different services, you can swap out the down leads or just have them removed if you're going to the range. But you can have different down leads without having to buy another thousand dollar headset. These are listed as being woefully expensive at $1,600. I didn't pay that, I'll tell you that right now because that's insane. But you can find these usually for about $1,100 or $1,200. So roughly the same as the Comtech 6s. And I think these are a way smarter buy at $1,100 or $1,200 than, than those 6s that just make me angry. Now the NRR rating of these is 22, so kind of the same as everything else, but the real magic happens is when you add in the NFMI. Now those are like little earplugs that you put in, they look like regular foamies, but they connect in using like a magnetic interface so that it pipes all the sound directly in. And when you wear those, it changes the NRR rating to a 34, which is crazy because you have this insane sound reproduction, like it sounds like it's coming directly into your ear, even though you're wearing foamies and the headset, it is just straight magic if you've never heard it before. Let's move on to the audio tests and hear what these sound like when you move up to one of the highest price tiers. This is a test of headset audio quality in a quiet space so you can hear the differences in voice playback. This is a test of headset audio quality in a quiet space so you can hear the differences in voice playback. So I think we're getting better sound reproduction, but I don't think it's like wildly better than some of the cheaper ones. What I found really interesting too is listening to the footage, I like the way the Comtex 6s sound, but actually wearing them, I like the way the amps sound a lot better. I'll be honest, I don't know what to do with that information, so I placed the Opscore amps in A tier. While I wanted to give them S, the insanely high price and fragile accessories gives me pause. But the NFMI makes these the best headset for indoor use by a long shot. I just don't know why some of the Opscore accessories seems like they're made with popsicle sticks. I have more screws in my amp arms, like, like connected to my helmet, than you could possibly imagine. So that's our headset tier list. I'm kind of surprised by it myself, mostly because I made it up as we went along. But hopefully by seeing all of this, you have a better idea of what headset works best for you in terms of price, sound performance, and features, so that you don't waste money on things you don't want or buy something that's so cheap and, and doesn't perform the way you want it to. And hopefully we get less people buying contacts just because their favorite YouTuber wears them. But I wanna say thanks to all of our Patreon and YouTube members. You guys make it possible we can get all this cool stuff, test it all out and show it off to you. And I wanna say thanks to everyone that likes, comments, and subscribes. 
Comment down below what your favorite headset is and what's your least favorite. I wanna hear about it. All right, everyone, full shout. This is a test of headset audio quality in a quiet space so you can hear the differences in voice playback. This is a test of headset audio quality in a quiet space so you can hear the differences in voice playback. This is a test of headset audio quality in a quiet space so you can hear the difference in voice playback. This is a test of headset audio quality in a quiet space so you can hear the differences in voice playback. This is a test of headset audio quality in a quiet space so you can hear the differences in voice playback. This is a test of headset audio quality in a quiet space, so you can hear the differences in voice playback. This is a test of headset audio quality in a quiet space, so you can hear the differences in voice playback.